This Dalmatian named Astro is getting adopted today. And I have a surprising update on Charlie the Chocolate Labrador that was shut down. And what happened to Pugsley? Did this family end up adopting him? Happy adoption stories and updates you've been asking for in this episode of Pup Dates. Sometimes I can just tell by your reaction, like your commenting and sharing of the video that a dog I featured is gonna get adopted fast. And I thought that's what was happening with Charlie. And I get it, cause like when I watch his video on my computer right here, it hits you right in the heart. But here's the thing, some of you folks even went to the shelter and no one was adopting Charlie because he was growling at everyone. He did that to me too. And he would just sit in the corner and growl at people. It's like any of that progress I made that day, I feel like it just went away and I was starting to get really worried and didn't know what to do. But then something very surprising happened I'm gonna tell you about. But I wanna first talk about Anna and Elsa from the last pup date video we did because everyone's been asking what happened to them? Did you have to separate them? As a reminder, I'll replay Anna and Elsa's story with you and then I'm gonna give you one of the most heartfelt updates I think I've ever been able to share. Seeing a scared dog is heartbreaking, but seeing two siblings that are huddled together and scared, I can't handle it. I've got to go in and sit down with these two and see if I can provide them even just a moment of comfort through compassion. It's gonna be okay, I promise. I know it can be a scary place, but I also know this is a really happy place. They're both about one year old. They just came into the shelter. And I don't know how far I'm gonna get with these two. They don't seem interested in affection. I'm gonna try my treats. Hey, look at that. It's gonna be okay. We're gonna get back to hugs and snuggling and love. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're the treat taker? I just need something and my treats give me that little hook. Now I'm thinking maybe we can make some progress. Also, can I just be honest here and tell you, I love these awkward moments. Like I don't want them to be scared, but, <laughs> but in this moment, that little leg up right there, dude, it's so awkward, it warms my heart. I don't know, it's cute. Is it just me? They don't have names, so I'm gonna give them the temporary names of Anna and Elsa because my daughter's watching a lot of Frozen right now, yes. But also because they're sisters, I huddled together, they only have each other. Elsa is interested in treats. I think I can draw her out a little bit, but Anna, she is not, and she's letting Elsa lead, and I need to get her a little affection too. So I'm gonna try to sneak her a treat and distract Elsa with some treats. Did she take it? She took it! Look how much trust Elsa's giving me. Fear can do interesting things to us and it absolutely shuts the dogs down to the point where sometimes they don't even eat. They don't know that that food is there for them. So I'm trying to introduce her to her food, let her know it's there, it's gonna be okay. She can eat and drink water and nothing bad is gonna happen. And look, she's letting me pet her. If I can show Elsa love and support and she starts to trust me, Anna will follow suit, but I don't want to put too much pressure on Anna. Let's see if maybe I can get them a warm bath. I think that'll give them a lot of comfort. Mel can groom Anna and Elsa. Cheryl's even gonna help out because they are so scared. The reason I asked Mel to groom these two is not because they're incredibly dirty or anything like that, but because grooming can really help a dog feel their best. She takes her time to take them, and although they're terrified, I know Mel has the gentle touch to make them feel their best. This one's even more scared than the other one. She gets them used to her touch first by gently brushing them out. They're a little tangled, but thankfully it's nothing too bad, and they can easily be brushed out. make you so pretty. When it's time for the tub, she makes sure it's nice and warm to relax them. She even makes sure to use a shampoo with lavender aroma. Yeah. You're doing so good. Now, and that's gonna help because lavender has a natural calming effect on people and dogs alike. Now, Elsa was scared, but Anna is even more fearful. Her little legs shake in the bath, but Mel won't give up. She takes her time with each of them and treats them gently. Oh, nice and clean. Even though they're anxious, look at how well they behave for Mel. You can tell they have a sweet side for sure. Even when the scary dryer comes into the picture, both girls wait politely. They know Mel is doing good for them. 
Wow, look at them now. Their bandanas absolutely bring out their confidence and you can tell they feel so much cleaner now. Sometimes people ask me why I do this and it's because of these moments right here. Me sitting with them combined with Mel grooming them, look at what a difference it's made. They wouldn't even go up to you at first. Now look, this will certainly make it easier for them to find their forever home. Now there are so many twists and turns in this adoption story, but let me tell you, it has such a happy ending. Anna got placed on hold by someone. Someone was willing to adopt Anna, but they couldn't adopt Elsa. And I get it, all of you say those two have to be adopted together, but sometimes what it comes down to is people can't take two dogs, and so the shelter has to make a tough decision of, hey, do we at least get them adopted and into loving homes, even if they're separated as hard as that is? Or do we try to adopt them together and then there's a risk that they won't get adopted? And because no one was stepping forward to adopt these dogs before they were highlighted, a tough decision had to be made. And someone put a hold on Anna. And then, and I don't, I, I think I have this story right. I'm hearing it secondhand. I tell all of you, don't call or email the shelter because it overwhelms them. Like when, sometimes when we put a video out, if that really takes off, they just get bombarded with calls and emails. And I appreciate all of you. I'm talking about like calls from Sweden. Can I adopt this dog? Can you ship this dog to me? The shelter is not set up for that. Now, sometimes the shelter can transport dogs, but first they have to kind of exhaust any local options. And this sweet gal, came from, I think, Phoenix or Las Vegas or somewhere and just showed up at the shelter. <laughs> just showed up and said, I want to adopt Anna and Elsa. She had recently, I think, lost their family dog, which is heartbreaking. And she just knew in her heart that these were her new family members. Now, <laughs> they show up and Lisa at the shelter, you know, First, she's a little taken back that someone just showed up from that far away. She was very, very interested in coming, and so um, I had told her that there was a first hold already on Anna. Okay. But that she could, you know, she said that, well, I want to take them both. And I'm like, well, you know, okay. I'll try. You're right. You no know, guarantees. So I go, yeah, everything has to be done in person. So the next thing you know, she flew here and brought me Reese's Pieces cookies. So she had it, and she baked them herself and brought them all the way from Arizona. But she brought her cookies, she handmade her cookies. So smart, unbelievable. Talk about the right approach. And she won Lisa's heart over and Lisa was like, "I yes, we are going to figure out how to help you. Which is just a testament to how awesome the shelter staff is. Because let me tell you, everyone expects shelters and rescues to be the most customer service friendly organization. And yes, while that's important, their job is to care for and protect these animals, not be the top end customer service organization. So sometimes people get really upset because they're not met with the niceties that they feel they should or or people aren't bending over backwards to get them the dog or the cat that they feel they should. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes into this, but Animal Friends of the Valleys, let me tell you, I see it firsthand all the time, and Lisa is a perfect example of that because she went to work right away. She called the person that had a hold on Anna and said, look, here's the situation. I know you had a connection with Anna, but we have a chance to get both of them adopted together. And that individual said, no problem, let's get them adopted. And they came into the shelter and picked another little dog and adopted that dog. So now the way is cleared and she can adopt the dogs. But no, then they get Parvo. So they have to stay in quarantine. But get this, doesn't matter. Mom still wants them. She heads back home. She comes back out. It's like a four or five hour trip. And this happens. Yeah. And then she came and met them. She took pictures of her with them. Okay. And she was sitting there and both of them were like in her lap. Just like oh, that's good because they wouldn't get in my lap. Oh, yeah. they, they were all over her. Oh, that's she great. said they were, and then yeah. when they left, they yeah. were like Just all, you know, like jumping up on her, like take me with you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like they were ready to go with them. So be. Sarah is going to be driving here and then she's going to adopt them both. Wow. And then take them both home to Arizona. And Alexis was there when they were able to pick up Anna and Elsa and here's what they said. So can you tell me like where you actually saw Anna and Elsa first? So it was off of Rocky's uh, Facebook post that my friend had shared with us. The day after she found out, boom, she came over. Hold on. What a great couple, by the way. I I love you folks. I wish I could have met you. So I flew out and I got to meet them and uh, they came right to me from the kennel and I just knew that we were, they had stolen my heart and I knew that they would be a good fit for our family. We've always adopted from the shelter and the Friends of the Valleys Animal Shelter is a beautiful facility and they have wonderful staff here and if you are looking for an animal, they have wonderful animals to adopt cats, They're dogs. Animals. And They're family. Your, your pets become your family. Agree. And look, look how Anna and Elsa are sitting in their laps. They're happy. They're comfortable. Completely different dogs than this before 
where they were just terrified. It's like they also know this was, this was meant to be. It's like this is what I was trying to tell them when I was sitting with them is you are safe now. It's going to be okay now. Sarah and Dan are going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Sarah, Dan, thank you. Remember Charlie? Let me tell you a story and ultimately what happened to him. If you spend any time at a shelter, you're bound to run into dogs that are shut down. And whether it be from abuse, neglect, or just fear from being in this new unknown place, you're gonna see it. Now look at this dog. What do you see? I have to tell you, he stopped me in my tracks. Outside of his big brown sad eyes, I didn't realize why at first, but then it hit me. You don't ever see chocolate Labrador retrievers this shut down. Let's go in and sit down with him. I guess the best way I can describe my feeling while I'm in there is it's kind of like when you meet up with that friend that is just always positive, always happy, and something's wrong. They're really sad, they're really down. And it, it kind of shakes your confidence because they're always supposed to be happy. And if they're not happy, Maybe something's really wrong. I think we always have so much to learn from dogs. And in this situation, I think that it's simply, we all go through hard times. Even when life's supposed to be perfect or when the things are supposed to be certain way, Labradors are always supposed to be happy. It doesn't always work out that way. And my goal in sitting with him is not to get him in my lap or, or get a big transformation or fix him. It's really just to be there with him. It's comforting sometimes just to have someone there with you, not to solve your problems, but just to go through them with you, to let him know it's going to be okay. Whatever he's been through, he's safe now. Now, I do think we can make some progress though. You see how he's facing the kennel door, almost like he thinks that's gonna open at any minute, and all he's thinking about is getting out of that gate. So I'm gonna turn my back to him and see if we can change the dynamic just a little bit, relieve some of the pressure just a little to get him to maybe open up. I think that's working a little bit. I want to spend more time with him because I think we're making some progress. Look at the progress we're making. He's not up against the back kennel wall. He's not trying to get out of the gate. This is good. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. You're a good boy. You want a treat? Whatever you have been through, I am sorry. That seeming smile is stress. When he relaxes a little bit like that to breathe, that's good. He is relaxing a little bit, but it is not a smile by any means. He's taking treats from me, which is, I didn't know if we were gonna get to that point at first. He's only taking the big treats from me. Like, he's so nervous that if I give him a little piece of my treat that I broke off, he won't take it. He'll only take the big piece because it gives him another couple centimeters of safety. Watch, a little treat. Not interested. Big treat, watch. That, just that extra little safety. Or he's just smart and he knows to hold out for the big treats. <laughs> he's calm, I'm calm, it's comforting. Even though we're not cuddling, just being together like this is really comforting. Like toys? Okay, okay, it's okay. Something new we're gonna introduce, we're gonna check it out. You like that? Yeah. Oh, you do like toys? Good boy. You got a toy? Okay, okay, you will get it? I don't think I'm gonna get him in my lap by any means, but just this, him loosening up like this, a tail wagon, willing to investigate toys with me, this is huge progress. What's that? What's that? What's that? You wanna get it? He didn't know how to put it in his mouth, that's so fun. Oh, there you go, you got it. Good boy, good boy. See if you take from an open hand. Oh. Okay, yeah. Thank you. You know, you know a trick. Did you see that? Okay, you ready? Shake, shake, shake. Oh, that 
It's the saddest shake I've ever seen in my life. Now I wanna check with Mel and see if maybe she's willing to groom him because I think just that warm embrace of a bath would go a long way for him so that he just feels good about himself. Mel is able to squeeze in Charlie before the day is done. Now we have no way of knowing the last time Charlie was bathed, if ever. But I will say this is really great for him for the bath, but also because it gives him a moment away from his kennel to decompress. Besides, that ear definitely needs some cleaning and treatment. It could be uh, flies. I'm not positive. Usually the flies do attack the bottom part of the ear. Once the flies start a sore, then it just, it gets worse. I try to leave the dogs alone when they're with Mel so I don't distract, but I had to stop in and see this boy. Hi, buddy. How's he doing? Oh, he's doing good. He's doing okay. Doing good? Yeah, I just sat on the floor with him for a while and yeah. brushed. There might have been some abuse going on because so. the minute I picked up my rake to just break him, yeah. he was, like, You're so scared he was very him. jumpy. Uh, that, any little noise. Yeah, I something's going on for sure. Definitely something's going on. And that's all fear-based, I think. Right. What if his owners come? Some questions. And we'll have some, yeah, we'll have some education. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this because I think just a Oh, he needed to be done. So much better. But he also needed it. He's very dirty and there's all this de shedding on yeah, get so out. Yeah, so many splotches. It's going to look really good when okay. it's done. All right, buddy, you're in good hands now. Mm -hmm. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Next step, forever home. Yeah. Now, Charlie's definitely going to need time in his new home. I mean, you saw how he acted when I first came up to his kennel. He growled at me. He needs somewhere where he can feel safe and at peace. And I can't wait until he finds that and watch him leave the shelter with a new family. Good boy. See you too, Wagon. Somebody's feeling good. I will say the fact that Charlie can sit there with Mel and deal with a loud, scary dryer is a testament to his willingness to start to trust again. This bath is absolutely the best thing for him right now, and I cannot thank Mel and Animal Friends of the Valleys enough for doing this for these animals. You can see what a difference it makes in Charlie. And look at how handsome he's looking now with that new bandana. I'm telling you, a bath can work magic for dogs with low confidence. Charlie, you're a very good boy. Wow, what a transformation. To see Charlie go from shut down to fresh and clean and running around with confidence and, and checking things out. It just makes me so happy. This is all within one day. I did not expect this. Just in case you needed proof that dogs are amazing and resilient, Charlie is that proof. Well, he knows you because he wants to go to you. Everybody else he wanted to growl about. But yeah. boy, he just panicked with those noises. He didn't know where they came from. Yeah, very skittish, huh? Yeah, I, I feel like he obviously was like put in a backyard or something where he hasn't experienced much. No, that really. behavior is so much harder to create in the lab. Yeah. Because it's just so bulletproof. But in the lab, it's hard to get him that skittish. Yeah, that's a good point. Glenn brought up a really good point about Charlie. He's a Labrador, and to get a Labrador in this mental state is really hard. You really have to neglect or abuse a dog like this. It can happen fairly easy to some breeds, like German Shepherds that are highly prey-driven, and unfortunately, mentally, they can just be put into this position a little bit easier. But Labradors are just preconditioned to be happy, fun-loving dogs, and there's not a lot you can do to them to get them to shut down. So it has likely been years of neglect or abuse or whatever that might be to get this dog in that mental state. I'm glad Glenn pointed that out. He's a professional trainer, so he sees situations like this, and his assessment, unfortunately, I think is spot on. If you can please share this, we've got to get the word out about Charlie. He needs a loving home. He's going to need someone that can just show him love, let him decompress, and teach him how to be a dog. I'll keep all of you updated. Let's find this boy loving home. He's not getting adopted because he is growling at anyone coming close to his kennel. And I started to get really disheartened. I was going, man, what are we going to do? Because if he does that, like, if no one's going to take a chance on him. And 
I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm actually on my phone and I'm going, maybe we do another post. Maybe I go on Facebook or Instagram and uh, YouTube community post something to just remind people that like that that is just him initially growling and you can work through that. And then I gotta tell you, out of nowhere, I get a text from Cheryl at the shelter and she says, you're not gonna believe it, someone just adopted Charlie. What? I need, I need more information. And she was like, I wasn't there, I was on lunch. I'm calling everyone at the shelter. <laughs> like, what, what is the story? Who is this adopter? I can't get any information. I go into the member section. You can, by the way, you can become a member. Just hit join on this channel. You can be a part of this. You can join for as little as $5 a month, or you can sign up for any level. It's a kind of pay what you want model. You pick a level that you feel comfortable with. All the members get the same access. As soon as I heard that information, I updated members. Because when updates come in, I can't update everyone wide right away. I have to make sure I have to get more information, et cetera. But I feel comfortable in the members group because if something were to go wrong, I can update members. It's kind of a safe space. So I update members and I even say in the video, here, I'll play it. Okay, so I left the shelter this morning and planned on posting a video about Charlie because when people come to his, Charlie is the chocolate Labrador. I know a lot of you know him, but he was so shut down, which is odd because you just never see a chocolate lab that shut down like you really have to do some damage or neglect to get a chocolate lab to be that repressed I made a video of him a couple weeks ago and everyone in the comments was like update update you know he's probably adopted but the problem is every time someone would go up to his kennel he would do the same thing he did with me where he would growl and so that just is not going to get you adopted at a shelter <laughs> obviously um so I left the shelter, I was gonna make this video, but then I got a text from Cheryl, and he's been adopted! <laughs> so, because you are a member, I wanted to let you know first about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start bringing updates, uh, positive updates, sometimes maybe hard updates uh, to you guys because this is kind of a, a safe community. Dog-loving rescue people in this community, and so I know uh, you'll understand a lot, we can learn together, but I just wanted to give you that good news. I thought, yeah, just made me so happy. So I will I will try and find out more. I don't know who the adopter is. Um, I'm very excited that someone is willing to take him. I don't know if they if, if you're watching this right now, if you saw our video and then went, went and adopted Charlie, but yay. Thank you everyone for being a member. This is awesome. But did you see how I said, you know, hey, who knows, maybe even one of you in the members group watch this. Sure enough, we get a message in our members group on Facebook of Steve posting pictures being like, look, we adopted Charlie and look how cute this is. And they love chocolate Labradors. They know him and Charlie's doing great. And how fun is that, that Steve was a member? It's such an awesome community. Steve and Marsha say that Charlie is doing great. Thank you, Steve and Marsha, for adopting him. Great news, right, everyone? Thank you for watching this and loving Charlie as much as I did. We are saving dogs together. You are a part of this. You are doing this with me, so thank you. Okay, everyone wants to know, did the family adopt Pugsley? Y y it's complicated. Let me refresh you on his story, and then I'm gonna tell you everything that happened. Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, oh. I promise we are gonna make sure you are okay. This little guy's happy right now, and I think it's because he knows I'll keep my promise. But he didn't come in this way. And understandably so, because someone just dumped him at Night Drop. What is Night Drop? It's a safe space where pets can be surrendered. You enter through there, it's open at night, you go fill out all your information, and then you're able to safely put the dog in this area right here. That's where the attendee comes and gets the dog out in the morning. When someone puts their dog in right here, the dog is now safe. They're not crammed in there, they're not uncomfortable. Okay, but hold on, wait. Did you catch what I said at the very beginning of the video? I said dumped, not placed. Someone likely threw him over that wall right there. They didn't even have the courtesy to place him in a kennel. I am sorry that you were dropped off and I don't know what you've been through, but you're safe now and you can relax a little bit. There's a family interested in Pugsley, which is so exciting because if he can get adopted that fast, wow, that would be great. I actually had the chance to ask Brittany, their mom, what they were looking for in a dog or what they weren't looking for in a dog. A smaller dog, that's what we need, you know, it's just something a little smaller, friendly with children and yeah. that doesn't bite. <laughs> and it doesn't bark that much either, which is nice. Right, right. Yeah. 
I mean, he's just barking. He's barking, barking, barking. And that's the one thing that she said she didn't want. No, no barking, no barking. <laughs> But, but here's the thing that I'll tell you is a dog behind the kennels is not the same dog as when they're out in the open in the right environment. Like you cannot judge, I guess, a book by its cover or a dog behind the kennel bars because it just creates such a different environment and reaction. I mean, imagine if you were locked behind bars, you might, you might behave a little differently. Now they're running around the shelter. They might be thinking about another dog. Uh, I mean, I want any dog to get adopted, but I just, I've just fallen in love with this little guy. Okay, the, the whole family's back with him right now, so I'm gonna go check in and see what's going on. I'm getting a little nervous. He's not really paying attention to them right now at all. He's getting distracted by the other dog and I'm worried he's gonna start barking away like earlier. I have an idea. I'm gonna try treats. You guys want some treats? Oh yes, please. Get a treat from the Puppers, snacky snacks. Oh, even the treats right now don't seem to be helping much. Thankfully, that's when this happened. Oh, grab the treat. Oh, look at the toys. Oh, you like toys, okay. Yes. Oh, that's it. Sometimes dogs are motivated by affection, others by treats. In this case, toys. This is going great, but will it be enough? No, 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 no. I just realized because he came in as a stray, there's probably a five day hold. Alexis, hey, isn't there a five day hold on a stray? Yes. So we gotta give them some time to potentially find the owner. I mean, good, yeah, good that I hope they find the owner. If it was my dog, I would hope that I'd be able to find my dog at the shelter. But also if it was my dog, I feel like I would be there the morning of knocking down the door. But you don't know, we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're in the hospital, who knows? And since we know this guy was literally dropped over the wall into the night drop carelessly, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's better he's here than wherever he was before. I got his card. Okay, so he was abandoned in the night drop. The family's gotta know there's a five day hold. I just hope this doesn't change their decision on whether or not they want to adopt Pugsley. I just had to ask him finally, what are you gonna decide? What do you think? Do you think this is an adoption? Yes! <laughs> okay, what about mom and dad? What do mom and dad think? I think so, I think, I think he's pretty good. Yeah, buddy, you're going home. <laughs> Get a video of his face now versus his intake picture. Oh, I know. <laughs> Another dog saved by Animal Friends of the Valleys. One, two, three, cheese. Okay, good. Yes, it's not official yet. There's still a five day hold. Bye, guys. Hopefully, we'll see you Friday. See you okay, all right. And you know what? This awesome family, they did adopt Pugsley, but something unexpected happened and their daughter was severely allergic. Oh no! And look, sometimes this stuff happens and it's not a bad thing. Getting a dog is a lifetime commitment, but the great thing about a place like Animal Friends of the Valleys is they worked with a family because there were other holds on Pugsley from everyone seeing this video. People saying, hey, if that family can't adopt Pugsley, we will take Pugsley. So the good news is no problem. Pugsley was fine with it and he got a new family and check this out. I have pictures that they sent to us. Look at this. He has siblings, two-legged and four-legged. Oh, what a happy family. And look, you can tell he's happy too. Like, look at his little east-west paws there on the floor. He's taking a little nap. Congratulations. Congratulations, Pugsley, and thank you to the family who adopted him. Okay, remember Charlotte? She had an awesome adoption. Something surprising actually happened. Let's watch her story and then I'll tell you. Oh, I gotta tell you about this girl. Now, her story, it just, well, I'll tell you. But first, let me tell you about Sharpay's. Like, someone spent a lot of money on her, thousands of dollars. Sharpay's are such an amazing breed, and they're pretty rare. You don't see them much. But when you do, you'll notice right away that they are strong, regal. They are often known to be independent guardians. They're intelligent and they're highly loyal. So I'm really surprised she's here. Also, they have a lot of roles. <laughs> How cute is she? But here's the thing, it's kind of been a yo-yo for her because she had a meet and greet recently. The family showed up with their dog and it didn't work out. And it's almost like you can just see it in her face that she's sad. I would have thought someone would have grabbed her up by now, but she's still here. I will tell you though, I was a little surprised because I didn't realize there was actually a second meet and greet that happened and they decided to come back 
and adopt her right now. It's happening right now. Like her little tail's a wagon. How'd you know she was the one? We were just walking around, and when I seen her, I, I don't know, I just knew. Can you believe she's in the shelter too? Like When I things? found out that she had been abandoned in the middle of the night, I'm like, why sweet. would a dog this so beautiful, beautiful. look at that tail wagging. So she is such a sweetheart. All the when little I rolls on her tail. I know, so cute. Yeah, that's so cute. adorable. We are part of a thing called Furbo for Good. We're going to give you guys a Furbo, which is a dog camera and a treat dispenser. So when you're out and about, you can check up on her and it'll just help with the transition. Oh wow. So thank we're gonna you. we're gonna get you one of those too as a as a surprise. Thank you for Oh that. my goodness, thank you. Yeah, That's you so awesome. Yeah. Hey, you hear that? I get to make sure you're okay awesome. when I'm out. Thank you for letting me spend time with you. Aww. Yeah. Thanks thank for all the cuddles and yeah. kisses. Guess what? It's time! We already know you're a good dog parent. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rewarding, Cheryl, to see someone who like knows what they're doing. They've got the blanket set up. They swoop the dog up so their paws aren't hot. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm just dragging them out. That makes me so happy. <laughs> like, no doubt that one will stick. Yeah. So here's the thing. Charlotte really had a problem with their cat and no one knew it when she did the cat test she was fine and they could just not work it out. So unfortunately, Charlotte's back at the shelter and she's going to need our help and that's okay. We can we can help her. We just you can share this. We're going to work to help her find a home. Most of these are positive updates and it's still going to be positive because we're going to find Charlotte her forever home. It's going to be perfect. And thank you to the family for giving her the opportunity. Yeah, I understand. Sometimes these things just happen. I think the thing about Luna that is so impactful for me is it's the first St. Bernard I've ever been able to just sit with and just feeling how skinny Luna was. Like, it's hard to see in the video, I think, but if you compare her to a normal St. Bernard and just how big they are, she was probably only at about half the weight she needed to be. And so it's understandable that all of you want to know what happened to Luna. Let me share her story and then I'll tell you. Okay, for this next dog, I really have to calm myself down before I go into the kennel because this is my first time actually sitting with a St. Bernard at the shelter. I mean, yeah, I've pet St. Bernards before and I've seen them, I love them, but getting to actually spend the time with a St. Bernard, oh, I'm very excited. And this is Luna, she's six and a half years old. And there's something special about Luna and maybe not in a good way, unfortunately, because she's a regular at the shelter. She'd have a microchip and the shelter scanned her and they found out She's actually been here once, maybe even twice before. You feel good. <laughs> yeah, it's at this point. <laughs> You're so skinny. The thing about her is she's so skinny. Like, she should be twice the size she is. I know she looks kind of big because of her fur, but when you touch her, she is skin and bones. It's so sad. I'm also so happy to be sitting with her. I say Bernard's are just, what majestic creatures. Come here. She's only been here for a day. It could be that her current owner doesn't even know she escaped the yard. Maybe she's just a giant escape artist. But what makes me think that might not be the case is just how skinny she is. I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but when you have a St. Bernard who's huge and so skinny and has pink paws, obviously got out and is a stray, I just wonder if they're actually going to show up. If they do, no shame to the owners and hopefully this is a moment where they can learn, but I just don't think anyone's going to come for Luna. And I just found out they got a hold of the owners and the owner said, just keep her. We don't even want to come up and pick her up. Oh, sometimes this job. Okay, but. Let's all share this. Let's get her the forever home that she deserves. The good news is she got adopted. Yes. Okay, here's the thing. I don't have any pictures or video on Luna's adoption. The family is fantastic. They're just really busy. And I think maybe they haven't seen our YouTube videos. They don't know what we're trying to do to share all this stuff. So I try to get the information for all of you when I can, but sometimes people don't know. They're like, what? why are you calling me? I adopted a dog. Leave me alone. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, it's good news. Greta, my sweet, sweet Greta. I know so many of you said, Rocky, you should adopt her, and I would love to. I am just not ready yet. But let me refresh you on her story, and then I gotta tell you the amazing journey Greta has been on. I gotta tell you about this next dog, and warning, it is emotional. This dog is skin and bone. If the owner comes to get this dog, they need talking to. This sweet dog has been nicknamed by the shelter, Greta. She may not look bad at this angle, but when she stands up, she's heartbreakingly skinny. Also, looking at her, I think she was probably used to breed. Now, she just got to the shelter, but the staff has already fallen in love with her and wants to see her get better. Despite everything she's gone through, look how quickly she jumps into the tub for Mel. She is just the sweetest thing. Look at her coat close up. She is extremely dirty. We're gonna probably have to wash her a couple times. I asked Mel what kind of life she thought Greta might have lived before getting to the shelter. Somebody's backyard that they didn't probably pay any attention to her. But she probably was infested in fleas. She has nothing on her now because they probably treated her when she came in. After washing her multiple times, it's finally time to dry off. I mean, ugh, look at that drain. <laughs> Greta started getting excited just seeing herself in the mirror. How cute. This girl shows all the best parts of her breed. Look at how fantastic she's behaving. Now, the only time she got a little jumpy was when Mel found tree sap stuck on her neck. And trust me, I don't blame her. That sticky mess is on like glue. And all done. Look at her coat now. It's glowing. And the pink bandana is the perfect finish. Look, Greta's going to take time to get back to health, but she's going to be well worth it for the right family. You're a local celebrity. Have you read all the comments? No. You need to read the comments sometime because they say things like, Mel is a superhero. Not all heroes wear capes. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that dog got groomed, but can we just talk about Mel for a minute? Like, oh, no. <laughs> oh. Are you kidding yeah, me? everyone loves you now just as much as we do. Oh, Greta, we named her Greta, the boxer girl. How yes. was she? So sweet. I'm a boxer have guy. You, I know she told me that, oh. and I tell you, I have never groomed or been around a boxer that was sweeter than her. Okay, I'm gonna go meet her she right now. She just captured my heart. I think you will fall in love sweet. with her. Oh my goodness. Yeah, go meet her. Okay, She's super. I'll, go, I'll go see her. Okay, okay. I know you don't like that camera. I get, I get it, I get it. I have some treats. Do you like treats? Look, whoa, oh, here, here. <laughs> You're not very good at taking treats. <laughs> oh, it says shorts now. I'm sorry. Let, here, let me drop it from above. Here you go. Watch it. Watch this. Watch this. Is that funny? <laughs> She's got to have it come from the top. Here, you want, a, you want a big Mondo treat? Look at that. Good girl. Oh, she's so sweet. Yeah, she, I mean, you can just tell from her nature that she's been through it, I, you know. I never like to put something on a dog that may or may not have happened, but sometimes you just feel it, you know? You just know, like, whatever she's been through, it wasn't good, and oh my gosh, you're like a drool machine. You boob in the camera? <laughs> Please don't eat the microphone. <laughs> okay, oh, it's a good girl. You wanna sit my lap? Oh, okay, the scoop. Uh, oh yes. Maybe we, maybe we've kind of both been through it the last couple months, huh? I'm sorry. Whatever it is, girl, I'm sorry. I just want to pick her up, load her up in the truck, and take her home. I don't think Kelly would mind. <laughs> it's like just sitting here with the dogs. I do it for the dogs for sure, but it just also just fills such a hole in my heart sometimes. You know, here I am. A couple months ago, losing my best friend, a boxer, and here she is, a cute little sweet boxer that's been through it. As I was sitting there with her, I couldn't help but think that, I don't know, maybe Flip put Greta and I in the same path and somehow guided us to be together, even if just for a moment. It's like she understands me, I understand her. There's nothing else in the world that can do that but a dog. I always, I always go as far as to say a rescue dog. Well, and I was tearing up for sure, but I, I don't want to let her know that. I just feel like I just feel like it could be Flip's way of saying it's okay dad I'm in an, I'm in a good place now where I'm at I'm happy while I'm not here physically my spirit will always be with you just feeling her heartbeat so calming 
oh, I'm sorry. Whatever you've been through, I am sorry. And from here on out, it's going to be okay. I promise. I promise. You need a butt scratch? You're so, she's so skinny. So skinny. She's even put on weight since being here. Ready? Hup, hup. <laughs> she's not leaving. You're not leaving? I gotta get up. I gotta get up at some point. Okay, all right. At some point, you're gonna have to. <laughs> she's fighting it. <laughs> you're the sweetest dog I think I've ever met. I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't easy to leave that room. I don't know how I don't take her home, honestly. Well, you would be happy to hear she does have a hold on her. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Oh yeah, she does. You might be going home, girl. You might be going home. Look at that sweet face. You might be going home. No one was adopting Greta. No one was interested in her, uh, or someone was interested in her that put a hold on her. But outside of that, she didn't have a lot of interest. But here's a great thing. Rancho Coastal Humane Society, a rescue pretty close to me that I've worked with in the past. They're fantastic. They picked up Greta. She is with them, and she is a staff favorite. I mean, <laughs> look at her. She's in the clinic, just making herself right at home. And get this, she had a medical emergency, but Rancho Coastal Humane Society is uniquely set up for that because they have a vet clinic. They jumped in, made sure she was okay, and now I'm happy to say she is officially available for adoption. And as usual, I'll put all her details, including how to adopt her, on RockyKanaka.com. Penny's adoption story is one of my favorite because it just goes to show that the dog behind the kennel bars is not necessarily who the dog is. And we got a chance to actually talk to her new family and see how she's doing in her new home after she got adopted. Okay, let me show you her story again, and then let's talk to their new fam and get the updates. I know normally I'm sitting in the kennel with a dog, but there is a very specific reason that I am sitting outside the kennel with this dog. It's because when you approach her kennel, she's very reactive. I think even more so with me because I'm a very tall male. Now I have a plan, but I don't know if it's going to work because there's still that barrier between us, those kennel bars. Now here's my plan. No eye contact, make myself smaller, and introduce treats. The goal is to see if that will open her up enough where she'll allow me into her space. Might be working. Right now you're searching high and low. And right now you don't know where to go. Right now you hear the thunder. Right now Here down. it feels like you lost the Now we don't know where Penny came from. She didn't have a microchip and a good Samaritan found her in their backyard. In fact, they even placed a hold on her when she was at the shelter and adopted her, took her home. But sadly, they had just lost their dog and their hearts just weren't ready for Penny. And so they brought her back. This is her second time here. Getting returned can weigh on a dog's heart. But here's the good news. The shelter let me know that today she's got a meet and greet with another dog. I just hope the time that I've spent with her will help make an impact because you never know how these will go. I mean, how will she interact with the other dog? How will the other dog interact with her? How will the family do? There are so many variables that have to go right for this to work. Okay, they're here. And the whole family's here too for Penny. So they're bringing in Penny right now and the meet and greet is about to happen. Oh, fingers crossed that this meet and greet goes well. Okay, the dogs seem to be getting along. Penny's not reactive to their daughter, Lana. But let me tell you, just as soon as I started to count my chickens, Penny starts amping up her energy level. Now to some, this can look like a lot of fun. Penny is happy, obviously. She's playing and having fun. But let me slow things down for you. Riley is a little uncomfortable with this. And Riley's 16 years old, a senior, probably isn't ready to just jump right into playing with a younger dog. That Jesse jumped in and explained, this is fairly normal and it's okay. And that Riley might give a correction and that would be perfectly normal. But most people don't understand that that's normal and often just decide that this isn't gonna be a good fit. 
Now, it doesn't mean she won't grow to love Penny, but Riley is unfamiliar with her surroundings and unfamiliar with Penny. This could go really bad, really fast. And I didn't know what to do. And I'm just thinking, did I do enough? Did I spend enough time with her? Is her energy levels gonna get too high? And is she gonna do something that makes this family not want her? And I just kind of froze in the moment. I didn't know what to do. And that's when I had an idea to introduce some dog treats. I wanna calm Penny down, but the question is, will she listen? They do. Look how it really grounds her. I think it proves that she is absolutely willing to take direction, but it doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what her potential new family thinks. Is it okay if she gives her a treat? Sure. Okay. You wanna give her a treat? Yeah. Okay, I think that. She's very gentle. Give her a treat. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. <laughs> I will say one thing that I noticed that meant a lot to the family, it would also mean a lot to me and my family, is how patient Penny was being with their daughter, Lana. <laughs> that was so cute. Hi, Penny, buddy. Well, what, what do you guys think? Oh, I think we're taking her home. <laughs> Yay! Okay, you said you need a dog bed and a, uh, okay. and a gate. I'm gonna get those for you in appreciation of the dog. Yep, and then we're also gonna send you guys a Furbo, which is a dog camera that also dispenses dog treats. Oh, it's awesome. amazing, because when you're out and about, you can check on it at home. So yeah, so we're gonna do that for you guys. Oh wow. And I can't thank you enough for choosing to adopt. Uh, every dog but we were that like, we have is, a dog is adopted from the shelter. It'd be better off to get a dog here that's, you know, it needs, it needs a home. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is so awesome. Okay, the family has to go fill out paperwork and I'm gonna show you in a minute here the happiest dog walk I think I've ever seen when Penny goes from her kennel to her new forever family. Now they needed a couple items right away like some bed and some treats, so we splurged on that for them, even got them an Animal Friends of the Valley's collector's hat, and as soon as we were done chopping, it was time for Penny to take her adoption walk. You're going home. You're going home. She's being adopted. Yay! Yay! Okay, go to your new fam, not me. <laughs> They're keeping the name Penny too. That's perfect. They said it's a good name. I couldn't agree more. We had a chance to catch up with Cecilia and it's really neat to hear how great Penny's doing in our new home. I asked Cecilia, how'd you hear about Penny? Animal Friends of the Valley has those posts, so I always read about the animals. And then, so we started looking and then Penny said was good with cats, dogs, and kids, which fit kind of everything we needed. Well, it really is because we needed an, uh, a dog that was good with kids and she is and good with cats because we have two and actually <laughs> the, the younger cat they play cute i have a friend who does um animal training so she's come over twice and she said that henny's learned faster than almost any dog that she's worked with like she's already she knows how to sit she knows how to stay she knows how to come so much better on it with the leash now she doesn't pull, and this is all in less than two weeks. It's crazy, but she's very smart. Yeah, Penny's a smart girl. And we know that because we saw how fast Penny learned in just the short time that I spent with her. And Cecilia, thank you for bringing an expert over. People always ask me, well, what can they do? Finding a local trainer within your budget can go a long way for making a transition like this really successful. In every animal I've ever had I've adopted, it's animals that need somewhere, you know, versus someone who's breeding puppies and, you know, selling them. I I just, I, I feel like it makes more sense to rescue an animal that needs a family. Penny still has to figure out which toys are hers and which ones are Lana's. <laughs> Sometimes Lana will hand her one of hers and it's like, no. Penny is very mellow, like she, you can do whatever. 
she has like zero aggression or anything, which is, you know, important when you have kids. She's pretty gentle with Lana. To Cecilia and her whole family, thank you for saving Penny's life. My team and I will keep putting updates about Penny on my website. And remember, any updates you want, you can just go to rockykanaka.com and dog by dog, we have articles on there with all of their updates. And we'll continue to update that over the months and years as we get more information. So feel free to check in anytime. If you could adopt one dog right now, what dog would it be? One only? Only one. I would probably take Daisy and Fork. Okay, why Daisy? Because she rolls over for belly rubs immediately. Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> Here's a great thing about Daisy. After a month of no luck, no one adopting her, a really great rescue stepped up called Love Bugs Rescue, and she's now in a foster home. So she's still available for adoption, but the good news is rescues will pull from the shelter, and that helps give these dogs a chance until they're adopted. And the same thing happened with Ella. Remember Cheryl's pick for the dog she would love to adopt? If you could take home any dog right now at the shelter, what dog would it be? Oh my goodness. Well, I really like Ella. Okay. She's out here. She's making great progress. So that's the one you'd take home? Yeah. Last Chance at Life was able to pull Ella because Ella has some behavioral issues. They're working through those and helping her, training her, so that when she's ready, she can go into a forever home. Remember, for these dogs, all the updates, or if you want more information on how to adopt these dogs, I keep it all updated on RockyKanaka.com. If you could adopt any dog that's here right now, who would you adopt? I would adopt Wednesday, because she's the cutest thing. Cute little black terrier. She was a mess when she got here. She needed to be groomed really bad, but she looked like a little gremlin when she walked. It was super cute. And then after they groomed her, she was amazing looking, amazing. Her body is just one big mat. I spotted this girl while I was at the shelter as she was being brought in by animal control. I was blown away by how bad she looked. I couldn't wait to tell Mel about her to see what she could do. Get this, when they got her in the groom room, Cheryl and Mel just had to spend time finding her body parts. They couldn't even find her feet or ears. That's all matting. That's not even a foot, I don't mm -hmm. think, is it? No. No? Here's, there's her toes. The <gasps> there's the paw pads. Mm -hmm. Now to give this girl back some dignity, the shelter gave her a name, Wednesday. I get it, looking at her is painful, but it's even more painful for her. That's why Mill immediately starts to shave down her mats. She has years of experience shaving mats, but this will present a challenge. I'm surface cutting this dog, taking the top surface off, which will sometimes allow me to save some hair. As she shaves carefully, she realizes something. All this was on her tail, and I thought she had a long tail. Wild. I had to ask her how long she thought this dog went without any hair care. I, I, I would think it would take like a year. This really does a number on the shaver, but look at the filth in that. You could tell she's young and her spirit hasn't been broken. That's great to hear, but I just worry that her spirit may not stay strong the entire groom. That was her foot. Okay, look at the size difference here. One leg completely shaved, the other leg still entirely cased in a shell. Whoa. With how much still has to come off, it's no wonder that Wednesday starts to get anxious. It's okay. It's okay. You're all right. Almost two hours go by and that's just her body. When they get to her face, she's just not having it. Thankfully, Mel is able to get to her face thanks to Cheryl's singing technique. That might seem a little funny at first, but some dogs actually calm down when you sing to them. Yeah, that'll be cute. That'll be very, very cute. And then everybody's gonna fall in love with you. But in this case, it's still just not enough to get to those sensitive parts like her eyes and her ears. So to play it safe, Mel decides to try to loosen some of those knots in the bath. Let's see how Wednesday reacts to the water. Hey, what do you think? You can see that this is all, this is all so new to this little dog. Mel does her best to try to ease her into this, even uses a lavender shampoo to try and calm her. But look at that, you can start to see Wednesday's cute little face as she uses tearless shampoo and loosens up some of those mats. Although she's still stressed out, this is something she's needed for so long. Okay, next step is important. She's got to get sprayed down. And here's why. Conditions the skin and it relaxes the hair. So if you have any more matting to take out, it helps relax it. With that and a little brushing, she can take care of more on her body. But with her face, Wednesday is still struggling a lot. 
Imel decides she needs help from Vet Tech Mandy to sedate her. Chemical restraint is actually pretty important. Um, it relieves the stress for Mel here, <laughs> and it relieves the stress for the animal. Um, we don't like to manhandle animals, we don't like any of that, so to have this as kind of a plan B, it makes all the difference. This groom is really important for Wednesday. She just doesn't understand that the shelter is trying to help her. All the sedation does is help relax her. And this will make her feel better because now Mel can get around those sensitive areas, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, without her hurting herself. Just in case you're wondering why there are bald spots on her. That's where it was pulling. So that's how you can tell how, how the mats were all the way to her skin. The good thing is the hair will grow back. And this time, it will grow without causing her any pain. And Wednesday is looking amazing compared to how she came in. Look at that. Even when she was looking her worst, two families put a hold on her to adopt her. I have some great news. Wednesday was adopted by her first hold. She's off to her forever home. If you could take home any dog, what dog would it be? I don't think she has, she has a name yet. Okay, why, why her? She's housebroken. She's pretty good with other dogs. Yeah. Yeah, no, she didn't have a name yet. Oh, hi. Oh, you can tell she's friendly, huh? She likes you. After some careful consideration, we decided to name her Molly. And guess what? Molly was pulled by the rescue, California Labradors, Retrievers, and more. So hopefully she will be finding her new forever home soon. Why is this German Shepherd missing an ear? This Mastiff Mama continues to get her puppies taken away from her, and I get to sit with my first ever Dalmatian. All of that plus an amazing adoption is happening today. Let's sit with some dogs. I want to introduce you to this Pitmation. Well, what is a Pitmation? I'll tell you in a minute. But first, look at this guy. It's like he's scared, but he's still curious. He looks really young. We gotta go in and sit down with him. I, I am in love with this guy. I can't tell if he's ready to play or if he's scared. M maybe, probably both. It breaks my heart how he's cowering. We've gotta show him some love. What is this? <laughs> Hi. 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 Need some kisses? Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. Should we count all your spots? You were loved by somebody, huh? You know, you already know I have treats. Let's see if you'll sit with me. Come here. Guys, this is the first Dalmatian I've ever sat with. Sit. Sit. Good. I bet we can scoop you in easy peasy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great time. Look at that face. Oh, my first Dalmatian sit. Hi. Oh, you're, you're excited too. Hey, you found the treats. <laughs> Tickles. All right, come on. Oh, you got the whole stick. You know what? I think he might be a Dalmatian with a little bit of pity in him, which would make him like the biggest love muffin ever with the prettiest spots. You are so pretty. What's his story? Owner Trennan, and I think they've been here before. Oh, so no. So they didn't last very long in their life. The thing about a Dalmatian, or a dog like this, is they need a lot of exercise. But a daily walk, a run, mental stimulation, like doing puzzles, gosh, he would be such an amazing family pet. And you would certainly have the prettiest dog on the entire block. You know, it depends on what kind of dog you want. If you want a senior dog that just lays on the couch with you and you don't go do anything, he is not the dog for you. If you want a dog that's athletic, that's fun, that'll run with you, that'll go to the beach, this is your boy right here. It just breaks my heart when someone sees this is the last option, right? When they bring their dog back here because I wish, I just wish I could have talked to them or worked with them to just say, hey, how do we get him some exercise? How do we play some games? Look, he's bringing a toy to me, right? He just wants to play and have fun. 
<laughs> Gosh, he'd be so much fun. Let's see if we can get him out in the play yard and have some fun. Oh, and what's a pitmation? Well, it's a Dalmatian and a pit bull. A pitmation. Astro is so cute. I went live. I started making a live video because I want him to get adopted, but I'm worried because of how much barking he does, how energetic he is. That's the surprising reason I think he's still here. All that barking, the energy. Even if someone gets past all that and brings him home, they might bring him back because they didn't realize how much energy he had. So I thought if we could go live, I could make a video and I could let people know that he would be perfect for the adopter or the family that is good with dogs or wants a dog that's energetic where they can take him on walks, they can play fetch with him, they can introduce him to mental stimulation games. Get him the exercise, give him the structure, and he will be one of the best dogs around. And I don't always know if these videos are gonna work, but I can tell you more than once, you all have really done the heavy lifting and have shared this video and got the word out and we've saved dogs. We might be able to just do the same thing for Astro. Hey, Rocky. Yeah. Somebody actually saw the YouTube live that you did on Astro. With Astro? Yes, and they actually decided to run down immediately with their dogs to do a meet and greet. I just did that video like 10 minutes I know, ago. Are I you know, serious? Yes. Wow, I am so excited. I can't believe someone saw the live video and then came up here and are smart enough that they brought their two dogs to the meet and greet. This could be just the right family, but I'm worried too because Shiba Inus are very particular and if they don't like something, they'll tell you. So we're gonna jump into that meet and greet, but this is the fun stuff. Like this is why I do it and this is why I make these videos for you guys. And for all of you asking how you can be a part of this, I'd love to have you as a member. We're building a community of dog lovers and dog rescuers. So hit that join button. Every month you get to be a part of this, you get to be a part of the community and you're gonna be the first to know when a dog is adopted or when I need help or there's a challenge. So I'm going to be updating that first because it's a good, solid community. So hit that join button. I asked Astro to be on his best behavior because we are not out of the woods yet. This meet and greet is going to have to go off without a hitch. Oh, I am so nervous. I cannot wait out here anymore. I have to go in. Now Astro and the two Shiba Inus are both starting on leash. This is a great way to start, but wow, you can feel the tension. Well, you can even see the tension on the leashes. No. No. He's barking right out of the gate. He's already barking. This is not good. And look at the two sheeps. They're just trying to get away. Just when I think his young dog energy just might be too much, he shows a sign of submission. This is good. He's sweet. He is really sweet. We might be turning the corner. Look. Hey, yeah, you can take your guys off, please. Both parties are somewhat uninterested in each other. They're not fixated on each other. Kind of just checking each other out. Okay. Okay, this could be good. Honestly, I had to step out of the room just to make sure that I wasn't added pressure in there because I'm so excited. I think this could be a perfect match, but it isn't up to me. It's all gonna come down to what they decide. Well, what do you guys think after that? You love him? Oh, he's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. The fact that they were all kind of like not interested in each other yeah, is yeah. always a really good sign. It's when they're hyper interested right. in each other that is a problem. Well, what do you, th you think you're gonna adopt him? I think so. Yeah! Oh, yes. You're going home, buddy. You're going home. This is for you. Oh, is that a happy tail wag? our two-year-old Dalmatian, Astro! Congrats. Your new family! We checked in with the new family and Astro is doing great. Can we just address the elephant in the room with Astro? He's not neutered. <laughs> and you know what? Here's the thing. 
It varies from rescue to rescue, but getting a dog from a rescue, the pet should be spayed or neutered because that's one of the best ways to keep the pet population down. With some shelters and rescues, you can guarantee to do that. You can sign a form that says, I guarantee to do that. It depends on the shelter or the rescue. If you don't do that, uh, you can't get them permitted or animal control can come pick up the pet and take them away from you. So you, you make a commitment and an agreement to do that. And it costs money. This stuff costs money. And so it, that has to come from somewhere. And people will say, well, that should be included in the adoption fee. Well, if the adoption fee is $25, sometimes it's hard to include that because uh, even a low cost spay or neuter where some of those costs are offset by nonprofit organizations or uh, city funding, even that's like $95. And so then the adoption would be, you know, 120 something plus, right? Now, here's a great thing about Animal Friends of the Valleys is sometimes in some situations, if it's best for the dog, if they're overcrowded, they will let pets go home to be spay or neutered with the agreement of the owner. And most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, that happens. Sometimes you get a bad owner, an owner that's overwhelmed and they don't do it. And then Animal Friends of the Valleys addresses it. But what's great is they are building right now a low cost spay and neuter clinic right there. It's going to be attached to the animal shelter. So they'll be able to do that. I don't know when it's gonna be open because construction takes time, but it should be in the next few months. So I'm very excited about that. We needed to talk about it because I know I know his stuff is just right there in the camera. We all learn together how this works. And so I'm glad, I'm glad you're asking a lot about Astro's situation. Please spay and neuter your pets. This shutdown Labrador gave me the saddest shake I've ever had. I got to hug a golden retriever, even catch up with our mama, boxer Greta, and more. Let's go sit with some dogs. What? Golden Retriever alert. Oh, I'm gonna go in there and sit with him. I have to because I, I kind of think if I was a dog, I would be a Golden Retriever. Eh, maybe a boxer. It'd be funny if poof, I turned into a dog and I was a Chihuahua. <laughs> Look, immediately, he's willing to jump into my lap. Golden Retrievers, no doubt, are really amazing dogs. I mean, look at this guy. Do you know how you sit? He's a good dog. Really enjoyed spending a little time with him and just getting to cuddle with him. Like he's he's such a cuddle muffin. I love it. It just doesn't get better. I will tell you this though, what happened next is a great reminder of how hard it is for dogs to be in the shelter. I don't care what kind of dog you are. Here's what happened. All of the other dogs in the kennel started barking. He got scared, he started trembling. You can't see it in the video, but I could feel the shift. And he immediately went in to start aggressively hugging me. And oh, it scratched my arm, it hurt really bad. And I just, deep breath. We took a minute, we calmed down. Asked him to sit. Sit. And once I got him calm, then I just calmly exited the kennel so that he could relax. But he's a good boy. He just needs out of here. The stress is getting to him. Only 10 minutes. I don't think they're coming. But he has a hole tomorrow too. It's always so sad when you see their collar in there. Like somebody loved him at some point, or still do, and doesn't know where he's at. He's really scared that like he scratched my arm because that, that fear of just all the dogs barking and being in such a scary place. Fear manifests itself in different ways in these dogs and what was re you know really cute golden retriever and it seemed, it started off really sweet. Then he just started panicking and just aggressively hugging me. <laughs> Take care of your husband here before I, before I don't make it. I might, Are you faint? Guys, honestly, I might not make it at this point. <laughs> All right, let's get back out there. <laughs> Go team. Are you kidding me though? A gold retriever in the shelter? And listen, I love all dogs and golden retrievers are also amazing. I think the big surprise to me is most people would say, I'm gonna buy a dog versus adopt a dog because there's a certain kind of dog that I want. But they're often at the shelter. Like, what do you want? Big dog, small dog, golden retriever, puggle, labradoodle, German shepherd, husky. They've got them all. Your shelter has them all. And yes, you might have to go to the shelter a few times. They might not be available the first time you go, but just go. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, but fingers crossed on Teddy because they only have 10 minutes to get here. I'm really hoping they show up. We only have 10 minutes left. Well, now it's five and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. We get down to three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and then this twist happens. 
Okay, you're not gonna believe this, but the front desk called the hold that is for tomorrow and they said, hey, the first hold didn't come, so you're up, make sure you come tomorrow. And they said, no, no, we'll come right now. So they're actually here in the lobby right now. Teddy is getting adopted. Okay, come on out. Everyone, let's clap for Teddy, he's getting adopted. Yay, come on, Teddy. Right here, right here, buddy. Thank you so much. Congrats, buddy. Congrats, you're going home. We're so happy you guys came today. You weren't scheduled to come until tomorrow. Right, but we could have waited. So the fact that you guys ran up here today, I already love you guys so much. Thank you so much, yeah. What? Oh, you found him? Yeah, I found him. Yeah. So, like running around or? He, we were gonna take, uh, take off and go for a walk and he was outside in front of our house and Started like posting them so somebody would recognize them. Yeah. No, nobody responded, so we brought them in. Yeah, we even walked him a little bit to see if somebody recognized him. Right, right. A gold retriever, you think someone would, you know. Hey, it was meant to be, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you for adopting. That's thank really you. neat that you guys did that. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. That makes me so happy that they found him and then they were willing to come up and adopt him. That's awesome. And get this, things are going wonderfully. He was a little scared on the ride home, understandably, but since then, Teddy's become his mom's best buddy while he's at work. He's her best coworker. He now loves car rides. He's getting along great with the family. It's a success story for sure. That's why I love doing this, these amazing, happy stories. And I'm gonna keep doing this. And I'd love to have you on this journey with me as well. So if you wanna become a member, just hit that join button. And you'll be the first to know updates just like this. Okay, Vince, let's talk about Vince. Everyone says in the comments, like, it doesn't matter that he only has one ear. That makes him perfect in my opinion. People are saying, I want to adopt Vince, but I live in the UK or I live all the way in New Jersey and nobody has come to get Vince. I know a lot of you agree with me that him not having another ear doesn't matter, but it does because the general population pass him by and go, that's not a perfect German Shepherd. I don't want him. I even make coloring pages that you can download that a lot of you did go to download. Thank you. By the way, I'll link it down in the description below or you can just go to rockykanaka.com slash color. Coloring. I'll even put it right here on the screen. And these coloring pages are awesome and you can pay whatever you're comfortable with. Like we were gonna charge $20, but I said, you know what, whatever you can afford, pay it. And that way you can download these and do these coloring guides. It's one of my favorite things I've done and I wanna do more of these if you all love them. Have you ever stepped out thinking everything was completely normal and then feeling like the whole world is looking at you like something is wrong with you? I can imagine that's what he's going through. Dogs live in the moment, in the now. They don't care if they have one ear or three legs. But what this guy doesn't understand is why everyone looks at him like something's wrong with him. And now he's in a place that is all new and different and he's scared. As soon as I saw him, I knew I wanted to go in and sit down with him to let him know he is not broken. You good boy. Hi, you've been through it, huh, buddy? What, what happened to you? I try not to read into their story too much when I sit with them, but some dogs, you can just tell more than others, just have such a story. Like what they've been through, where they've been. He has a good sniffer, that's for sure. He found the treats in my back pocket. <laughs> he's a pretty big boy, like he's got big paws. I didn't even see it at first because I was focused on him only having one ear, which is, I'm sorry, but just downright cute. Okay, that's all the treats. I'm gonna get rid of the treats because I'm so focused on that. Are you done with me now I don't, that I don't have anything to offer? <laughs> He's like investigating everything. Check it all out, huh? In true German Shepherd fashion. He's gotta, he's gotta know his entire surroundings. He's a tall boy. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you're, you're kind of like a close talker. It's almost like, I don't know how much affection he's had. He's willing to give it. It's, it's almost just like, he, though, he doesn't know what it is. Watch. So he's still curious about it. He's not 100% comfortable yet with pets. What I love about German Shepherds is they're so strong and determined. And so when you see a German Shepherd like this, who's obviously had some hard times, doesn't mean that he wasn't loved. He's just, he's, you can tell he's been through something. It's just kind of heartbreaking. Like you just want to take him into your home and let him know it's going to be okay. Because all German Shepherds want to do is they want to be there for you. They want to protect you. They want to make sure you're okay. I just hope there's someone out there that can return that same thing to him. I think that if there's someone out there willing to open up their heart to him, 
he will immediately give you a Won't you, bud? <laughs> and <laughs> he's got a super cute face. That missing ear makes him like the perfect combination of derpy, but also strong, still a strong German Shepherd. And three is a perfect age, right? He's not a puppy anymore, but he's not at the senior end of the years. And he's still got so much life and energy. Imagine taking him hiking and playing fetch with him. Do we have a name for him, Alexis? No? No name yet. No name. He seems pretty sweet. Yeah, he's really nice. He's still really unsure of like just affection. I bet he was a backyard dog, just cause like he, he didn't have any interest in cuddling yet. He will, it'll take him a little time, but you can tell he wants love. He just doesn't know how to get to that. Okay, listen though, I think we came up with a really good name. Alexis was talking about maybe Vincent Van Gogh because you know, the one ear and yeah, we thought what, what if we shorten it to Vincent or Vince? Yeah, Vince, I think that, that fits. Wait, but someone told me he had a hold sticker on his kennel car. Yeah, um, it looks like they just didn't update it yet, unfortunately. So they actually called and said, hey, I'm sorry. We're not going to be able to handle a German Shepherd right now. So. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. What's really neat is he's eating his food now. And that's a big deal because before I was in there, he wasn't eating his food. So it just gave him kind of a little bit of comfort and confidence. And look, the surprising reason someone doesn't adopt him is definitely because he only has one ear. It's the only reason he's still here. So we have to work to get him adopted. Vince, I don't care if you have one, two, even three ears. You look perfect to me, buddy. Okay, so we gotta get him adopted. How you can help is share this, post it on social media, send it to your friends, or you can download his coloring book. It helps us continue our efforts in helping dogs like Vince. Oh, I have some good news about Franklin. I wanna introduce you to this guy, Franklin, that I met as I was walking through the kennels. Now, he stopped me in my tracks because he just looked like he had given up. And I thought for a minute, is he winking at me? Like, what is going on? But you can tell something's really wrong with his eye. Yeah, look at that. Even on his intake picture, something's off. Let's go in and see if we can give him a little comfort. Sometimes I can hide when I'm tired or in pain. Like recently when my dog Flip passed, I still have really hard days and I just try my hardest to put on a smile. But have you ever been to the point where you just can't hide it anymore and you just wear it on your face? I think that's what Franklin's going through. When a dog comes into the shelter, I imagine they gave their whole life loving their family. Yet somehow Franklin ends up here at the shelter and he's probably pretty close to giving up all hope. At least, that's what his face says. What's going on with your eye here? Let's see. Can we see it? Let's see. Yeah, he's trying his best to open it, but you can see how it's his left eye, the right side of the screen that's bugging him. <laughs> oh, I. You want to shave? Look at that. Sometimes that's all you need is that, is that one moment where it's like he's willing to keep trying. I'll still try to keep giving some more of myself. This could be the start of turning the corner with little Franklin. Oh, you got the whole thing there. Man, you're faster than I thought. I thought. <laughs> uh, he was by the freeway, which is scary. Oh no. Um, and he did have a hold, but it looks like it didn't work out. Oh, I'm sorry. And he's just available now waiting. I'm glad a good Samaritan found him before he ran out into the freeway. Yeah, he could use a bath too. Maybe we check with Mel with him. Oh yeah. See if we can get him a bath. Good boy. Here, you <laughs> thank you. You've done enough Paul shakes. You can just have a treat. Good boy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> was that just a thank you? <laughs> okay, buddy, let's get the eye checked out and let's see if we can get you a bath and get you feeling better. Oh, that's the eye that's hurting. Yeah. Mel can get him in to give him a bath. He's just really dirty. He's shedding. And if we want to get him adopted, I think it would help to clean him up, huh? Mel starts by taking care of his ears and nails and removes a painful foxtail cluster. Oh, and listen to what Mandy says, she's a vet tech, about his eyes. You guys can see he's got a little 
He's got a little winky eye. So we don't necessarily know if it's swelling by itself, which is causing entropion, which is, you know, the eyelids rolling inwards. Um, and then you get the eyelashes and stuff that rubs on their eye and it's super uncomfortable or it's an entropion and it's causing secondary swelling. So that's what we think is going on with Mr. Franklin, poor thing. We have him on a good anti-inflammatory just to bring down, you know, the pain levels. We do have some eye drops which have a little topical steroid in it. So that should really take down the inflammation in the eye itself. Oh, and look at that. His signature move, the paw shake. He's thanking Mandy for the checkup. Okay, now it's time for his bath. Mel explained he was shedding a lot, and given the fact that he was found at a gas station right by the freeway, this is probably a spa day that's long overdue. It's gotta feel like the best back scratch ever with all that extra hair being combed off. <laughs> I'm a little jealous! But you know what I'm not jealous about is that he doesn't have his family yet. He doesn't have a forever home. And look, this is proof that he would make such an amazing family member. That dryer can be really scary to dogs, and he's a perfect gentleman. He's unique. He's putting all of his trust into Mel. He knows when he finds a good person. Honestly, I can't believe he's still at the shelter. Okay, after some finishing touches and a little extra love and care for his eye, you can tell that he's feeling lighter and cooler than before. And look at those cute little puppy ears. He does not look six and a half years old. I'm really crossing my fingers that one day soon he gets to meet his new family with that amazing paw shake. He was picked up by California Labradors, Retrievers, and more. So now that the rescue has him, I think he's gonna find a fantastic home. I can't wait to see which one of you adopts him. I wanna show you some Mastiff puppies and the sweetest Mastiff mom I think I've ever met. I was trying to give mom some attention because likely she's been used to just make puppies and then people take her puppies and it's always hard to get mama adopted. Everyone's gonna want to adopt the puppies right away. So I always just try to show them some love. Hi, say hi. Thank you for being such a good mama. It is hard, it's hard to get moms adopted after the puppies are gone and they just look sad and they are sad. So I just wanna show her some love too. And of course, these little puppies. Their paws are so big and they still have the puppy bellies. Hi, puppy bellies. Hi, mama, you're a good mom, huh? But I mean, massive puppies. Wow, she's so pretty. Look at this coat, hi. I have Kelly in here with me right now because uh, setting a camera down with puppies and a mama, like they all attack the camera. <laughs> it's like toys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you have some you have some fans over there. They must watch your YouTube channel. They must. <laughs> They're pretty stinking cute. I just love having all of you in here in this room with me because this is just heaven. Was I not just saying that mama dogs are so hard to get adopted? And then this family comes back. They were here yesterday. They put a hole on one of the puppies and they came back and they said, you know what? Let's think about also adopting mama. Wow. People are good and people mean well. It's people like that, that even if they can't adopt mom, the fact that they're considering it and they came up here to meet again with her, it just warms my heart. But this is another finger crossing moment. I hope they come back for mama tomorrow. Tell the camera who you are and what you do. Officer Payne, I work here at Animal Friends of Valley Animal Control and I'm adopting Medusa. Yeah! <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks again. That's so cool, man. Yeah, and hopefully they're thinking about adopting the mom. Too. I hope so. so, man. He's adopting the girl. Yeah, you got the girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I got him. I think I'm thinking we might take mom. That would be awesome. Yeah. Them together. Yeah. Mastiff Mama. She actually got adopted. She went home. Three hours later, they brought her back. I'm trying to find out why. I don't know why this happens sometimes. It is so frustrating. But she's still there. All her puppies are gone. It's just her there. And she needs our help spreading the word so we can get her adopted. I'm enjoying sitting with dogs. I know all of you are as well. And I'm going to keep these pup date videos coming. If you want to be a part of this, become a member. Hit that join button or download my coloring pages. And to watch a playlist of all of sitting with dogs, I'll just link that right here. Updates on any of these dogs, go to RockyKanaka.com.